This is a really neat looking biome up high, but unfortunately when you get down among the trees and it forces that green fog shit on you, and it, I just don't like it because it feels like you're breathing in pea soup. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to start off by finishing our supercomputer uh, build here so that we can finally get our assembly director systems going for the space elevator. Um, so I've spent quite a bit of time off camera, as usual, uh, not only designing the blueprints for the supercomputers themselves, but rebuilding um, the original computer configuration and a modified version of our circuit board configuration uh, that we already did up there uh, as a part of the you know supercomputer build. Uh, I've also done a, a few other things to prepare for this too. I, I went ahead and decided just to do them off camera so we could you know get this project done and get on to other things before the end of the series. So let's go into fly mode here and uh, we'll just run around real quick and show you uh, what those things are. Okay, so, um, yeah, like I've said, uh, this whole blue section here is an exact replica uh, or duplicate of the first original computers that we built. Uh, because, of course, supercomputers themselves need normal computers as one of the inputs. So, didn't change anything at all about this. It's exactly the same as before. Um, I also rebuilt the circuit board, which is this little green section here over here but this one I did modify because of the inputs uh, you know were, were a little bit different than the original blueprints so I just made new blueprints uh, with the modified versions so we have the same thing going on here we've got quartz coming in here and we're producing silica and then we're producing the silicon circuit board recipe uh, however this machine is feeding the high-speed connector manufacturers and this machine is feeding the computer um, assemblers over there and then so I adjusted all of the rest of the stuff to match those inputs these two refineries are uh, producing copper sheeting for both of these guys and this refinery here is producing copper sheeting for an assembler that we're gonna put in place over here to make um, AI limiters Okay, uh, so we did that. Uh, I also went around and checked and made sure all of our inputs, our raw resource inputs, uh, were at capacity, which they are. Um, I, I think I, I beefed up the, the coal machines, you know, way, way over yonder a little bit more, too, just to match the numbers. And uh, just trying to think if I did it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did do something else over here. So... I added more plastic because the supercomputer recipe that I'm using requires plastic as an input. And so way up on the Tower of Power, where we have all those refineries use, utilizing, you know, the, the poly resin, uh, I added more machines to produce plastic for us and then upgraded this line that it's coming in on to a Mark 5, 4 or 5, I think it's a 4. Um, to, to bring all that that product in and then underneath over here so that goes all the way around and then you know comes underneath on the main bus and then over there I've got uh, I, I'm just splitting it off uh, using the smart splitter and putting the excess into the sink um, and there's excess right now because I don't you know I don't actually have the supercomputers running it but it comes in right here goes through this smart splitter and then any overflow comes out here and then the rest goes this plastic line will go to the supercomputers that we're going to build and then this one goes over here to the coated plating you know that we set up in the last episode okay so we did that and uh, let's see I had to set up some more uh, logistics down below including another water extractor to get all that stuff to work but again I just I wanted to do most of this kind of side work I guess you would say or logistics work off camera so it's all ready to go and all we really need to do is just plop in the supercomputer 
uh, blueprints and hook them up and, and we're good to go. Uh, also hooked up the final output for the assembly director systems over here. So that's these two assemblers and I have a, a conveyor line running all the way over to our train station where the train will you know carry the product to the actual space elevator. Uh, so that's all hooked up and ready to go too. The final um, major thing I did off camera is I, I had to lower my rails uh, because those were up too high because as you can see I, I built the road down over to this Caterium deposit which is a pure uh, you know a pure node uh, because uh, the entire supercomputer blueprint set uses Caterium for the inputs because we're using it for wire and quick wire in particular. So this is a super, uh, I'm sorry, not a super, but a pure node. And I decided just to use six smelters and overclock them all um, to 18.7. They're normally 15 per minute uh, rather than put even more machines in because it just kept, you know, the connections and the log logistics a lot easier. So this Mark III miner is currently pulling 336.6 ore out of the node to feed all of these guys. And then I decided, um, you know, to use a truck rather than, I, I could have also easily, of course, run a conveyor line just all the way down there, but I figured out oh, what the hell, let's, let's build down our road a little bit more and have a truck actually deliver uh, this product. And that just kind of goes up over the hill and then in, so I didn't really go any further with the road there. I think that pretty much covers everything I did off camera. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and hop on over here then and, and get started putting the supercomputers together. As usual, I did have them all put together, hooked up and working earlier just to, you know, make sure everything's good. And um, so we should have minimal uh, issues with stuff, you know, needing to be adjusted. But I, I won't be surprised if there's a few things because it's you always miss something. Right. But we'll see what we can do here. OK. So let's go ahead and hop on up here and we're going to go to our blueprints and we're going to use a yellow theme for the supercomputer. So let's start with the supercomputer itself. Actually, we're going to need to temporarily put some walls in for the first one as usual. Nothing new there. Only have to do that on the first one, though. All right, we'll grab the supercomputer. Make sure we're in default mode and we want to nudge that down I think that's correct this is a manufacturer making the actual supercomputers themselves these are our inputs and I'm using the normal supercomputer recipe I do have an alternate that we found uh, which is this one here but don't let this fool you <laughs> <laughs> the stuff that we need, especially to make the radio control units, is quite a bit more extensive um, than than this here. So even though this does make three per minute, I opted to go with this one because it's just going to be less hassle. Uh, we would have had to do a whole other aluminum production line, you know, brought in more oil um, and bauxite and all that kind of stuff to make this work. And, you know, I, I looked at both options and I laid out all the machines that we would need and you know the normal recipe and then just overclocking the machine just a little bit so that it does two per minute which is what we need you know ultimately uh, was by far the simpler process plus the fact that I could then just reuse both my circuit board and my computer blueprint set anyways uh, you know for a good portion of this besides of course having to modify the circuit boards just a little bit okay um, and as you can see I've got uh, all the logistics already set up down below ready to hook up just again to make this process as quick as possible uh, because what I would like to do if we have time in this episode is go start hitting the desert and going after some more hard drives in the latter part so that's why I wanted to get through this fairly quickly let's go to the next blueprint here and we're gonna grab the number two high-speed connector this time we want to be in blueprint mode and that looks right Okay, so we'll pop that in place there. Now what we want to do is grab a manufacturer and put it in position here. These two manufacturers here 
are going to be creating three high-speed connectors a piece because we need a total of six high-speed connectors on this input here for the supers. Okay, so we got that done. Um, let's go ahead and get these lines hooked up here now. So we're going to need the quick wire is going to need a Mark three lift. And I should have, usually I put signs down to indicate that. Yeah, Mark three in. Uh, and the lift itself also needs to be Mark three. Okay, so we grab the lift and we just hook this up here. Listen for our little click sound. And then these two inputs can just be Mark one. So we got circuit boards and cable. This one we're gonna have to build down with the, yeah, with the output going that way. Like so. Okay, let's get rid of all that. We have a Mark 1 lift. And that should hook that up. Oh, I should also be using our yellow theme for our build. Let's uh, repaint these guys. These are all already hooked up here. So let's run a mark three line to there and then just mark one lines to here and to here. I think that's all correct. We'll also uh, paint that manufacturer. All right, let's go ahead and patch this back up for the moment. And we'll put the next blueprint down. As you can see, I've got a, a support here in the way. So I ended up putting some of the logistics on top, which I don't normally do, but it was just easier to do it that way with, instead of trying to work around that because this next blueprint is very busy. A lot going on with it. Let's see, we want to go... Can't s I can't see what the hell I'm doing here. Oh, okay. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Lock it in place. So yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on in this blueprint. Um, it's essentially seven constructors making a buttload of quick wire. And, you know, with all the logistics and stuff, I figured, well, what the hell, I'm just going to put the returns on the top this time instead of on the bottom and try, you know, work around that pillar. Okay, now that we have that in place, we're actually going to come over here and we're going to put down a uh, an assembler. Let's see. I couldn't fit it uh, on the blueprint because, you know, there wasn't room for it, of course. Uh, so we're going to pop that there. And this assembler is going to be making AI limiters. And we want it to make four because each one of these takes two, or no, sorry, this goes into the main machine. Yeah, so this needs four AI limiters there. Okay, before we do anything more with this over here, let's get the some of these inputs hooked up. So I'm just gonna remove all of that. The output of the supercomputers will go to this belt, and then that goes all the way up to feed into the final assemblers, making the assembly director systems. Okay, so for... Uh, yeah, you. we got to redo this one. So this is a Mark I out for the high-speed connectors. Mark one in, and then that's takes care of the input here on the main manufacturer. 
and this is going to be the outputs for the well actually before we do that let's let's get this lift connected here okay that takes care of that now we'll come over here and uh, I'm gonna actually pick that lift up and put a new one in listen for the click which we got and then this needs to come around and go into here so let's get lined up with that oh it's okay so it's right on the seam there so let's go back to we're gonna have to come down one though and that should get our AI limiters hooked up beautiful it's a beautiful thing We also need to run a power connection down to here. And speaking of which, let's hook up a line from here. Oh, I need to put uh, the caps on that. And we'll bring this over to... Actually, here, let's just run it straight up to there. Uh-oh. Why are you not... Oh, I know why. Because I need to hook this up. And then that needs to go to here. There we go. And this one we need to directly hook up because we had to add it after the fact. Okay. Now we're good. Good on power. Okay. Let's get the inputs hooked up to these machines before we work on the other stuff. I like to kind of do this somewhat in order so I don't get all mixed up and miss something. And I usually miss something anyways. So uh, let's do the circuit boards first going into here. So we already got that. Um, we just need basically a Mark 1 lift. No, not there. Here. And it should click. Here we go. Okay. Because I already, you know, like I said, hooked that up earlier. So that's going to bring our circuit boards into our two manufacturers making high-speed connectors. Again, these circuit boards are coming from uh, one of those assemblers up there. The the uh, I think it's actually the nearest assembler. Yeah, it is. It's the nearest one making six. Next, let's get... Um, okay, that's going to be the wire, uh, the quick wire connection. And we can't, we can't do the cable connection yet either. Okay, so... Uh, that's a Mark 4. We can hook that part up at least. Both of you are... Oh, okay, your quick wire is actually a Mark II. Um, yeah, this is correct. This is Mark IV from here to here. And then Mark three from oh that's already hooked up okay so this quick wire input needs to be a mark two belt or two or lift rather okay so we'll grab that because it's taking in 80 And then this copper sheeting one only needs to be a Mark I. And I think we just bring it down to here. Listen for the click. And 
and we should be good. Let's just make sure that copper sheeting is actually going to start feeding into here. It should, but we'll double check it. There we go. Okay, we're good. Fantastic. All right, now let's do the quick wire um, output here. So what we need to do is do use Mark IV, and I'm going to remove this sign because we need to put a floor hole here. We'll go with a Mark IV lift, and we want to bring this down to here, um, facing that way, I believe. And then this Mark IV belt should just go right into there, nice and neat-like. That's good. Good, good, good. Okay. Let's get the Caterium ingots connected next. So we need a Mark II lift coming off of here and into here. And there's our click, and the product's moving. Beautiful. And then that's just going to wrap around all the way around here and down around into all of the seven of those machines. I had to drop this belt here because otherwise it was running right into this little, you know, uh, bracket piece there. That should be all we need to do for that. Let's get power over here. So we'll just run from here to here. Um, why are these two not firing up? Oh, that's right. I forgot to fix this in the blueprint. I remember this happening to me. Um, so these are producing 59.428 quick wire. And now those are as well. Yeah, I just need to, I need to fix that in the blueprint. They just weren't assigned a recipe. Okay. So that takes care of all of our quick wire being made. Our final blueprint is going to be for making cable. So that's this guy here. Um, no, actually I want it the other way around. I want it this way. Okay, that should give us power. Let's get the Caterium ingots hooked up. Used a lot of Caterium for this project. That's a Mark I belt. There's our click. And then the cable outputs come from here and this should be just a mark one connection going all the way to there and that line should be clear all the way down so I want to make sure I see cable coming out yep that one's doing it and that one's doing it. <coughs> Want to make sure they're all coming through. Yep. Very good. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I think we got it done. So this will start getting its cable pretty soon, and then once it does, it'll get kicked in, kicking in on the high-speed connectors. Just watch it for a second, make sure we see the cable start to come in. I 
There it is. What about you? Beautiful. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so... Uh, let's go ahead and close this up here. And, um... Oh, we gotta hook the plastic up. That's what we need to do. I think what I actually ended up doing for that is flipping this around and I also did not update the blueprint for that either. And this needs to be mark... Oh, it can still be mark one. Okay. Here's our click. And we need to actually, yeah, we need to actually connect to the computers, but they're already, of course, as you can see, queued up there. Everything's been backed up because I took everything down to rebuild it on camera. And, uh, all right, so that gives us our computers and our plastic. We should see AI limiters coming in. We do, and we should see high-speed connectors coming in. Beautiful. So as soon as this fills up, we'll start our first supercomputer. Haha, uh -huh, look at that. Fan frickin' tastic, man. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Now of course, you know, as usual, it'll take a little while for everything to normalize and get caught up, but it won't take that long actually because all of this stuff is has, has been just waiting and has already been completely full as have the circuit boards. So we're really just kind of waiting for all of these machines to get fully up to speed, which shouldn't take too long at all. Um, but we're not quite there yet because this one doesn't have enough quick wire to keep its cycles going. You know, we could help it along. Why don't we do... So I have all this extra quick wire in my inventory from when I took it down. So I think I'm just going to artificially speed things along here because why the hell not? It's already loaded up real good with circuit boards. Okay. Now, let's run uh, over here. Oh, we gotta patch this back up. cut that away and we need to so the supercomputers are, are already hooked up and they're on their way as you can see and they're connected here and here to the two assemblers and I already have actually have some supercomputers in these assemblers from my testing. So that one has 32 and that one has 31 waiting, ready to go. So what we need to do now is we need to do away with all of this business. And get our lifts reconnected. Oops. Let's try that again. Okay. Heard the click there. And heard the click there. And then we just need to run you right into there. And there we go.
So as soon as these get their adaptive control units, they'll start making assembly directors. Um, and we could even help it along a little bit because let's just throw those in there so I can get started making them. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> the amount of work that went into to building this production line. By far the biggest project I've taken on so far in this game. And that's just one of four phase four <laughs> items that need to be made to quote unquote beat the game. Um, but of course that is not even within the realm of possibility before 1.0 comes out. But that's okay. That's been the plan all along anyways. But we should see assembly director systems popping out of here and heading on down to the space elevator any moment. There it is. You are a pain in the ass to make. I hope you know that. Ah, oh, geez. Okay. So I suppose what we should do now is go um, turn our train back on because, you know, I, I turned it off once I pulled down the temporary setup. So it can start delivering these things to the space elevator. So we still have 3,044 to go. But now it's automated, so it'll be happening into the background. And it's even with that, it's conceivably possible that we still won't get it done before the end of this series. We'll just see. But yeah, that belt basically runs all the way down here and then drops down a little bit here and then comes around this way and over to the train station. So I'm just going to turn this guy on and he can do his thing. I wonder if I need to back it up. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay. I could, you know, I could just have him sit there until this fills up a little bit, but there's not really any reason to. The locomotives do, you know, draw power whenever they, they're working, but it's not like we don't have enough power. Speaking of which, now that we do have all that shit hooked up, what are we looking like on the grid? So we're uh, potentially consuming... Uh, 92 th uh, or 9,209 megawatts, but we're still producing uh, well over 13,000. So yeah, we're we're using it, but we still have a decent amount of room there. It is my intent to set up nuclear power, you know, maybe just one or two plants just to do it, just to kind of you know see what it's all about. So what when we do that, you know, that'll of course add more to our power too. All right, guys. Well, I think what I'm going to do here is cut the camera and kind of get ready for us to go exploring. Um, part of that means that any hard drive that we currently have marked that we have stuff for that I didn't before, I'm going to grab. So see, this hard drive needs heat sinks uh, three because uh, when I first just uh, you know, discovered that one. I, I wasn't able to make heat sinks at that point. This drive here wants super position oscillators, which we can't, still can't make. That one wants supercomputers, so we can, we can go after that one. We can do this one, high-speed connectors. That one apparently is just up in a tree. But again, I discovered that really early before we had our jetpack. That one needs heat sinks. That one needs quantum computers, which I can't make. And 
that one needs superposition. So basically what we'll do is we'll go around to the drives that we already have marked and get those as we work our way to the dune desert where we're going to do some exploration. So I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to do that. All right, guys, we are ready to go exploring. So I have pretty much just about one of everything or one stack of everything here in my inventory of items that, you know, hard drives might want. And I got a couple stacks of explosive rebar, stack of cluster nobilis, two full cartridges of homing rifle ammo, a little over a full cartridge of turbo, and a full stack of each type of filter. And I think we're ready to go. Okay, so the first stop along the way is going to be up on the cliff directly ahead of us, where we'll grab that um, hard drive, which I think is one of the ones, one of the two that I have marked that needs high speed connectors. And then we'll just keep working our way towards the dune desert, hitting all of those hard drives along the way. Okay, let's stop here and we'll pull, we'll pick this up and just take it with us. It's uh, questionable whether or not it's even worth it to bring the Explorer, to be honest with you, because with the jetpack and all of that, it can move around pretty quick. Um, just trying to think if I can get up there from here. Okay, let's go to here. I think I can make that. Let's see what happens. Mm, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> it's a good thing there's water there, huh? Oh, that was so fucking close. Okay, well, let's go around over here because uh, we can, we can, should be able to get up to that cliff. I mean, we can also make a ramp if we have to, but let's come up this way and see if we can get up there. Oh, maybe we can't get up there as easily as I thought we could. Might be able to get up there. How did I get up there last time? I don't remember. Maybe this is the way we did it. It's bad bads up there. Well, I guess we can't stand there. All right, let's recharge the jetpack. There we go. So I think we're actually, yeah, we need to get all the way up there. Can we do that from over here? I hope so. I mean, here again, if I have to, I'll just make some ramps. Oh yeah, you know what? I don't think we can get up here, there from here. Um, we have to go all the way up to the top and come over that way. Let's, let's just try it though. Maybe we can. I should have just gone all the way up to the top using our hyper tubes. I'm going to pick more of those cause I'm getting kind of low on them. Hmm. Yeah, that's the end of the road for here. Unless I can get up on these ledges here. Okay, yeah, maybe we can make this work.
Oh, wow, that was close. <laughs> I just barely got to the ledge there. Oh, my God. That's a long way to fall, too. Come here, you bastards. Hey, you can't do that to me. Alright. So you need the heat sinks, which I have. And it's a done deal. Okay, let's put uh, you down. And oh shit! I forgot I had another recipe. Um. I. Uh, I don't know if I like any of these. That's compacted coal. Well, rubber, I think, isn't 20 the default? Well, 20 per minute, so... This one's... Yeah, we've looked at this one before. I, I just don't like the idea of using fuel to make rubber when rubber's a byproduct of fuel. It would only really make sense is if, if you were in a situation where you had excess fuel, you know, from another build and you needed something to do with it, which I don't have. I'm not in that situation. Um, This is... This is useful because... It allows you to just use iron instead of copper to make wire, but it doesn't make a lot of wire. Let's just take this one. Okay. Because that, that one's not terrible. It, it's, it's somewhat situational. Of course, most of these alternate recipes are. But I, it seems to me like it's more useful than those other ones are. Um, I don't think I want to pick up this extra stuff. I will pick up the bio stuff, though. Until we run out of room, which we always do. Okay. Feels like it's been a long time since we've done this. Go exploring. I've been building factories like crazy. Uh, ooh, wow, look at those bad bads. What? kind of bauxite is that? Like, is it pure, normal? It's pure. Okay. Well, that's good to know if we need to ramp up our aluminum production. Let's remove this. The next hard drive we want to go after is... Well, we can't do a superposition oscillator. So there's no point going after that one. We, this one we can do, though, for supercomputers. So we basically want to go pretty much just due east. Okay. Let's do it. Something, there's a yellow slug inside of those rocks. I don't think we'll go way out of our way for slugs, though. We still have plenty. There's a bunch of uranium up here. Let's avoid that for the, for the time being. Rid of all the poison plants. It's too bad we couldn't, you know, didn't have some kind of gas harvesting mechanic for these things so we could actually use them for something. All right, well, this is what they were guarding.
look at this. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess this isn't really a cave. It's kind of a cave. I think we've actually been in here before, just from a different angle. Let's just avoid the nasties. Pretty neat looking through here, though. Uranium. Okay. Let's jump up here. So we're off the ground and we'll take a look at the map. So we're heading all the way over to the supercomputer one. <clears throat> so we still got a ways to go. We're only about halfway there. Let's do it. Yellow slug inside of there. We might as well grab it. So apparently the Summer Sloops and Mercer Spears are going to be a thing in 1.0, but I watched that video with Snut recently where he said they're changing their purpose for, you know, from their original plan. We've got a purple slug down there and one down there. So whatever that means, I don't know. That's also a pure bauxite. Should we... The slug down there is probably just guarded by the poison, I think. Uh, actually, oh yeah, there it is. Well, no, there's a couple of big hogs down there. I think those guys might be the irradiated hogs, too. Let's get rid of that poison plant. Jeez, man, there's like another purple slug directly in front of me. Get them to bugger off so we can grab this real quick. We're probably only going to have enough time in this episode to make it to the desert, and then we'll start the next episode doing deserty stuff. Oh shit! I thought that was solid. Well, that was an easy purple slug to get to. see we were sitting up there and we saw another one right down here somewhere there's a coal node as well oh was I looking at was I just looking at this purple plant it's a doggo we should go back sometime to the crater lake biome and see if we can find our doggo nope there is a purple slug down there Grab 
this real quick before something attacks us. All right, let's go. It's Vamanos. Where are we at? I gotta go this way. Hey, boyos. Another purple slug. It's time for a game save. You're not the only one that can blow stuff up, dude. Give you a taste of your own medicine. Alright, we're just about there. We have uranium and bees. Okay, let's go. Supercomputers. There's a sphere or a sloop in there. I want to waste ammo on that stuff. Okay, so let's go here. Whoops, not there. And we'll remove this guy from the list. And we also got the message that the next one is ready. Alternate heavy oil residue, alternate steel canister. This is actually pretty good a hundred cable per minute that's huge because doesn't the default recipe only make 20 per minute i think well here we can do this open in codex oh it makes 30 per minute okay right um that's not bad i think we're gonna take that let's do it scan the next drive that is not bad at all Okay, next drive is pretty much, again, due east from here. We have one in a tree and one that needs high-speed connectors, and then one in the, down in the swamp that needs heat sinks. Let's go. The Titan Forest. Well, would you look at that? Don't think I can reach that from here. So we do this.
Okay, we're basically heading in the right direction. It's a big sulfur node down there. Well, I don't know if it's a big node. It is a normal node. Grab the blue slug. How much room do I have left? There's limestone, looks like, down there. This is a really neat-looking biome up high, but unfortunately when you get down among the trees and it forces that green fog shit on you, and it, I just don't like it because it feels like you're breathing in pea soup. Not a fan. All right, here we go. Looks like that's an iron node down there. It's a yellow slug down that way. Irradiated bad, bad there. Okay, we're getting close to our hard drive in the tree. Should be right over here. Oh, look at all that copper down there. Nice. Let's go grab this guy. Should be looking like right at... Oh, yeah, I see it down there. Also guarded by nasties, which is to be expected. Oh, well, guess what, though? Nasties can't get to us. We need 50 megawatts, and there's radiation here. All right, that makes things a little more complicated. Can we build these? Oh, we can build those in the tree. Not complicated at all. Ah, all right. Let's use these giblets here. Whoopsie. All right. Now we want to go this way for the high speed connectors. I remember the last time we were here, we found that high speed connector drive, but at that point I wasn't even anywhere near far enough along to make high-speed connectors. Would he jump down here to try and get us? Probably not. Before I forget to, let's um, get rid of this. Yeah, we gotta go after the heat sinks. Okay, so yeah, these are just right here. Isn't there usually a bad bat up here? Hmm. 
And another one's down. Okay, let's go after this one in the swamp that wants heat sinks. Uh, we might as well... Oh, you know what? I didn't get a good launch there. Oh, there's like a lip or something there that's preventing me from doing the slide maneuver. There we go. Might as well grab this purple slug. I think we already hit that drive over there. But we'll check it again. Oh, I guess he's dead. <laughs> uh, he's dead. You can't kill a corpse. Well, unless you're hunting zombies, I guess. Yeah, that's the tree with no foliage. Pretty damn sure we got this one, but we'll check it. Yeah, we did. Okay. Did I get the notification that our next recipe's done? I don't remember. Let's check. Uh, no. It's got two more minutes. Okay. Don't be doing that. What's up with that tree, man? Let's go check it out. Maybe there's something significant to that. Why has it lost all of its leaves? Quiry minds want to know. There is a blue slug up there. Couple blue slugs. Three blue slugs. Four blue slugs. Okay, so are they implying that the slugs killed the tree? I didn't know slugs did that. Five blue slugs. How many blue slugs does it take to defoliage a titan tree? Oops. What did we pull? Six in total? That's crazy. Is that all of them? think so all right let's head south and get that last hard drive stop over here and grab this yellow slug and there is a, a drive down there and I don't know if we've ever been there so we're gonna go check that out ma'am research is complete Okay, well, that would have been handy, except for I'm pretty sure we're done making these things. Actually, are we? <laughs> um, we need them for assembly director systems, which, of course, is what we're making now. There's that shitty rigor motor recipe that I hate. Um, steel rotor. See, now that's not so bad, because you can make five per minute. Uh, a normal recipe is... Okay, normal recipe is four per minute, and I guess we... Oh, right, we already have the copper sheet recipe that makes 11 and a quarter per minute. Requires screws and copper sheets. Well, you, you have to go through the same steps to make wire that you do copper sheets, so that doesn't gain us anything, really. But... 
Well, and I can make... I, I got the cast screws recipe, too, so I can make the screws in just one step. So, I mean, that's not terrible, but it's not as good as what we have. Um... Normally, we make two and a half per minute on this. I would probably grab this if I knew we were going to stay on the save for the long term. Um, and after researching to see if we still need to make these for other higher level things. But, hmm. okay, hold on a second. Yeah, uh, the only thing this is used for is adaptive control units. And adaptive control units themselves are only used for assembly director systems. And assembly director systems are only used for the space elevator. So it's not something that would benefit us later since we're already in, you know, we've already built everything. Now, if I would have gotten this before I started the ASD build, or ADS build, this would have been useful. So I'm going to re-roll. And by the way, um, I don't think they're changing the way all this works in 1.0, and we won't be able to technically re-roll, but they're doing something else, which we'll still kind of remember. We'll, we, won't, we don't have to commit to the recipe immediately. Like here, you basically have to take it or re-roll. So I don't, we won't be able to re-roll in 1.0, but what we will be able to do is sit on a recipe and we have to take it immediately. I believe that's what the deal is with that. Okay, this is a drive we're going after down here. Hey. Oh, shit. That's a lot of bad bads. Okay, give me this. All right, let's get rid of this. You know, one one of those little bee plants is not a big deal, but Several of them together are pretty damn dangerous, actually. Did we get him? Yeah, there's his chiblets right there. Sucker. Alrighty, um, I don't think I'm going to pick up motors, <coughs> excuse me, or screws, um, or for, for that matter, even computers. <laughs> uh, yeah, so our work here is done. And we basically want to go to the northeast. Can't do anything with these two hard drives. So let's do this. Look at that galaxy. That is so cool looking. Oh man, I love this world. Spider over here. What's he guarding? I don't know. 
Barrel nuts? And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. We have made it to the edge of the Dune Desert. Awesome. Okay, um, this uh, this actually looks a little bit different than it did in uh, Update 4, which was the last time I actually was in the Dune Desert. I don't remember those trees. Cool. All right, so we're going to basically wrap up the episode here, and then we'll pick up right where we left off in the next episode and go explore the desert, look for more hard drives, and enjoy the last part of this world that we have not investigated yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.